Ooh, toasty nuts. To the final meal bakes of 2020. It's episode 10. Whew. Can't believe it's already the last one. It's flown by because I've got nothing else to do because we're in lockdown. We're gonna be doing one last tech car. We're gonna be making these walnut whips. Although apparently they don't have walnuts with them anymore, they're just called whips. Oh my god, look how small they are. Uh, ingredients. Walnut halves, plain flour, some icing sugar, two eggs, double cream, baking powder, coffee beans, unsalted butter, cream of tartar, gelatin leaves, caster sugar, vanilla extract, some liquid glucose, although the recipe says corn syrup. Can I get this? As usual, milk and dark chocolate. That's what it looked like. You can see those. So, for the last time this season, on your marks, go set, bake. Okay, we've prepped the ingredients for the sable biscuit. So step one, heat the oven to 180 fan, tip the walnuts onto a baking tray and toast for three to five minutes. Okay, remove from the oven, leave to cool, reduce the temperature of the oven to 140 fan. Okay. 60 grams of walnut, let's go right to here. Just gonna roast my nuts in a separate bowl, cream the butter and icing sugar into a light and fluffy. Then add the egg yolk and stir until combined. Put 55 grams of unsalted butter. <laughs> 40 grams of icing sugar. And this is where it goes everywhere. Nice and smooth. Oven's preheated. I'm gonna uh, stick my nuts in the oven. So egg yolk into here, egg white into here. Probably we'll need another egg white for the marshmallow. Ooh, toasty nuts. So into a food processor we go. Cool down now. I'm gonna blitz them all. Yeah. Switch that off. I'm gonna fold these into the egg yolk mixture. So you get some sort of like paste, I guess. So I've got 80 grams of flour and an eighth of a teaspoon of baking powder. This is very small. This is the smallest spoon that measurement I have. <laughs> Look how small it is. I don't even really think that's gonna help too much. <coughs> okay. Okay, so it's quite a loose dough at the moment. So I managed to wrap it in some cling film, flatten out a bit. Uh, it's gonna go in the fridge to chill for about 15, 20 minutes. So in the fridge that goes and we'll make the ganache. Ooh. So I've got 150 milliliters of double cream going into a pan. And in with that was going coffee beans. The recipe says 150 grams, but 100 grams I think is probably enough to infuse it with a coffee flavour. <laughs> There's a, lo a lot of coffee beans in here. Probably thought 50 grams is probably enough. Let's put medium heat until just below boiling and then we'll just leave them. It says leave them for 15 minutes to infuse whilst 
I guess whilst the, the dough is chilling. Okay, I'll do. Okay, it says leave in 15 minutes. So let's just put a timer on this. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Oh, it smells really coffee. 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 Uh, roll out the dough until three millimeters thick. Use a four centimeter cutter, stamp out eight discs and place on the baking tray. Uh, chill for 10 minutes, then bake for 20 minutes at 145. Ta -da! Ta -da! Okay, that's 10. I've got so much dough left over. Right, well, I guess we'll make something else out of this. In the fridge for 10 minutes. Okay, these have been in the fridge for about 10 minutes. I can tell you, my kitchen smells of coffee because infusing this cream with the coffee beans. Oh my God, it smells amazing. Coffee's coffee smells amazing so these are going in the oven at 145 for 20 minutes whilst that's happening we're gonna finish off the gush okay I'm gonna heat the uh, cream and the coffee back up again so just below boiling and then I'm gonna pour it over 250 grams of chocolate I'm gonna try and make like a truffley ganache how much is gonna pop through. Wow, I don't mind to heat some more cream up, to be honest, because I don't know how I'm supposed to get this off. There's far too much coffee in, in this. Hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna pour this through like this. That's better. I think I just left them in the pan too long, probably. Okay, I've whipped up my ganache. It's quite thick, um, and I had to just put it on a bad marie just to get the rest of the chocolate to melt, all right. But um, I'm gonna leave that to cool now until it's a bit firmer, and then we'll put it into a piping bag. Okay, look all right, not too bad. Might give them a few more minutes just to get a decent coloring on them. For the marshmallows, take the gelatin in a bowl of cold water for five minutes until soft. Place the egg whites and cream of tartar in the bowl of a stand mixer, fit it with the whisk and whisk to firm peaks. Okay. Okay, here's my uh, lightly golden sable biscuits. Leave them to cool for a few minutes, then we'll put on a wire rack to cool completely whilst we make the marshmallow. Okay, so we've got two gelatin leaves here. I always feel like they're like, they remind me of a Rubik's game thing that I had when I was a kid where you had to flip over some tiles and I always felt like this texture. Very weird. The two leaves of gelatin going in cold water. Okay so I've got two egg whites going into my stand mixer. Half a teaspoon of cream of tartar which I think is just a stabilizer to help it. Whisk to firm peaks. So it might take five to ten minutes, I guess. So we'll start off slow. Mix it all together. And then after a few minutes, we'll whip the speed up and then we'll get to, to firm peaks. My uh, egg whites whisked up. I'm pretty sure I had trouble with this last time when I made this a few, maybe a couple of years ago, when I beat the egg too much or I left it for too long. And all of the egg white kind of stuck up down the bottom. Also the recipe says to use corn syrup and I it's impossible to get corn syrup in England. So we're using liquid glucose instead. 
I'm gonna probably use the same amount. Um, this is 125 grams of corn syrup. So I'm gonna probably use the same amount. Experimenting, we'll see how it goes. I need 125 grams. Uh, it needs to be 115. This is where it could go horribly wrong. Okay, this has reached 115 degrees. We're now going to pour it into this. Just down the side, steady stream until it's all mixed in and then we will mix it all at a high speed. Increase the speed to medium high and whisk for three to five minutes until a thick meringue. Oh my god, look how hot it is! Oh. Looking nice and shiny and glossy. Looking alright so far. I've got my gelatin and some here into here. Well, it's certainly glossy and. Ooh, it's definitely got a consistency of marshmallow. Uh, I'm going to whisk in uh, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> that is really nice. Into a piping bag this goes, into a piping bag the ganache goes, and we just need to chill things down so it'll be able to set. And then we can temper some chocolate and put it all together. It's so soft and pillowy. Okay, done. Pro tip, don't overfill your bag, otherwise, you won't be able to close it. But this is really, really light. It's very light. Nice. Uh, I'm going to chill this in the fridge for, what's it say, 15 minutes? Oh, look at this. this is, feels like caramel consistency, like a thick caramel consistency. It's just chocolate and cream. I'm going to stick this in the fridge as well to chill for a bit. Okay, everything's chilled. Hopefully, like a nash. My marshmallow is set enough that I can actually pipe this. A pipe, a two and a half centimetre high like cone in the middle, and then surround it with the marshmallow. Okay, I've got so much ganache left, this is ridiculous. Oh, I'm gonna pipe some marshmallow around this now. Very nice. Oh my God, my hand is shaking so much. Do it this this way. Pretty impressed with those. The last few look pretty good. Okay, they're going in the fridge to chill and um, hopefully they won't fall over. Okay, time for the interesting bit. I'm going to try and pour this over my, I'll say 10, but we'll try and do 8 and then just try and do it evenly without it.
just it doesn't seem to be enough to coat it all. Oh god, no, this is not going on very well, is it? Absolute mess. Oh, it's done. Right. I've done the best I can. Trying to coat these. Right, I'm just gonna leave them to set and then we'll um we'll have a taste. Hopefully they taste nice, but cupping these in chocolate, the most difficult thing I've done this season. Here they are. Pick the best eight. Let's have a taste. Compare the two. Mine's a lot bigger than the, uh, the one from the shop. Oh, look at that. Good layers in that. Good layers. Mmm. Oh my God. All my days. Mmm. Oh, they're nice and tea based. So I've got a, a Tonux tea cake, basically. Well, not from Odom. Not my smell of it. Nice and silky smooth. All that together, really nice. Hoo -hoo. Amazing. Walnut Worlds. Nailed it. So, that's 2020 done. What's my favourite bake? I think the donuts were the nicest. Those tasted very nice. That creme mussolini and strawberry jam with the donut was really nice. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. Um, and if you want to see any of our recipes, put them in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. But again, thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.